So Frank and I are going to discuss joints very quickly. So what is a joint or an articulation? This is where bones connect or when bones connect with cartilage. So you can think of joints as probably the most common joints you would think of is the shoulder joint or even the knee joint or the hip joint. But there's many different types of joints such as the joints that hold the bones of the skull together or even the joints that hold your teeth inside of your jaw or even the joints that hold your ribs to your sternum. So there's many different types of joints in the body and what we're going to do is classify them according to the space in that joint and also in accordance with how freely movable that joint is. So I'll say that again, we're going to classify joints by the size of the space at the joint and also how freely movable that joint is. So let's define a couple of terms which we need to use. First term you need to be aware of is something that's called Synarthrotic. A synarthrotic joint is an immobile joint, a joint that cannot move. There's also something called an amphithrotic joint. And an amphithrotic joint is a joint that can partially move. So it has a little bit of leeway. And then the last type of joint is what's called a diarthrotic joint. And a diarthrotic joint is a freely movable joint. Okay, so what we need to do is at the end of our table that we're going to draw up, classifying joints, we're going to state whether these particular joints that we outline are synarthrotic immobile, diarthrotic, which is freely mobile, or amphiarthrotic, which is partly mobile. Okay, so, first thing we need to do is that there are three major, three major types of joints that we can draw up. First type is something that we call a fibrous joint. The second type is what we call a a, cart a cartilaginous joint and the last type is what we call synovial joints. So these are the three major types of joints. Fibrous, cartilaginous and synovial. Let's first define fibrous joints. So fibrous joints are joints in which there is no joint cavity. So what's a joint cavity? The, a joint cavity is when you think of those synovial joints. So the joints at the knee, for example, or the hip, or the glenohumeral joint here. That is when you have two bones articulating and there's a little cavity which has fluid inside. Fibrous joints do not have that joint cavity. So we can write up no joint cavity. and that the bones are connected together through dense, regular connective tissue. Bones connected with dense, regular connective tissue. Okay. What about cartilaginous joints? Well, cartilaginous joints as well, they have no joint cavity. And in addition to that, it's cartilage that connects two bones together. So you have pad-like cartilage connecting two bones together. A pad-like cartilage connecting bones. 
Okay, and the last type of joint is a synovial joint, and that means that there is a joint cavity. And that this joint cavity has a synovial membrane which releases synovial fluid. Synovial membrane and synovial fluid. Okay. So these are the three major joint classes, but of course they have some subdivisions of them. So, first subdivision of fibrous joints is what we call a suture joint. Now, a suture joint, as an example, is what you'll find with Frank here. If I want to take his skull off, if possible, if I want to have a quick look at Frank's skull, what we'll find is that Apart from the hole that we've put in, in order to hold the skull cap on, you can see a couple of little suture lines holding the parietal bones together and the frontal bone and the occipital bone, which is part of the lower aspect here. This is called the sagittal suture, and this is a fibrous joint holding those two bones together, which are the parietal bones. So we can say that suture such as sagittal suture for the skull. Okay, what's another type? So we've got a suture, we've also got something called a gomphosis. Now a gomphosis, how do we know where this is found? Well, when you see gom, think of gum, G-U-M. Think of the gum. The gomphosis joint is simply the joint in which the teeth articulate in at the jaw. So, teeth in, jaw. That's a gomphosis. And then the last type of fibrous joint is what we call a syndesmosis. And a syndesmosis joint, syndesmosis means to bind or to wrap. And so this is where you have connective tissue that wraps two bones together. So it's the connective tissue you would find between the radius and the ulna. It's also the connective tissue you'll find holding the tibia to the fibula as well. So get that leg back down. So you can say tibia fibula or radius ulna. That's the type of joint holding those two together. Okay, so they are the fibrous joints. Let's now move down and look at cartilaginous joints. So we'll just separate that out. So one type of cartilaginous joint is a Let's put two up here. There's going to be two particular types that we need to look at. Look at. One particular type of cartilaginous joint is a synchondrosis. And the other type is a symphysis. Firstly, synchondrosis. You remember, so you've got syndesmosis, synchondrosis. How are you supposed to know which one goes where? Well, synchon, chondro. Chondrosis is going to be part of the cartilaginous, which means a synchondrosis joint is actually where you find cartilage within bone. So the type of place that you find cartilage within bone is, if you think of the long bones, okay, you're going to have a what we call a diaphysis. Now the diaphysis is the shaft of a long bone. Then at either end you have a proximal epiphysis 
and a distal epiphysis. Now, at the epiphysis, there is a line in here, which is called the epiphyseal line, also known as, when you're younger, the epiphyseal plate, which we generally refer to as the growth plate. This growth plate is made up of hyaline cartilage, which helps to secrete osseous material, cartilaginous material, which then ossifies into bone and helps to grow the long bone. Therefore, a synchondrosis is the epiphyseal plate. Which, as I said, is also just known as the growth plate. That's cartilage embedded within bone. What about a synthesis? Well, there's something that we call the pubic synthesis. And the pubic synthesis, if we have a look at Frank, for example, you'll find that here at the pubis, there's a bit of cartilage in between. And this cartilage is between this part of the hip, and that's what we refer to as, sorry, not the hip, part of the pubis. And this is what we call the pubic synthesis. Okay, that finishes the cartilaginous joints. I'm sorry about this little downward curve for my writing. Now we're on to the synovial joints. But what I want to do is I want to spend an entire video, maybe five or so minutes, talking about the synovial joints and using Frank as an example to highlight whereabouts you can find the synovial joints. Okay? So what you're going to find is that there's a number of synovial joints going from most free to least free, or least free to most free in regards to their range of motion. Just remember what you'll find in synovial joints is they have a synovial cavity, synovial membrane, and synovial fluid. But let's go back to those terms we were talking about before. The synarthrotic, meaning totally immobile, the amphiarthrotic, meaning partly mobile, and the diarthrotic, meaning mobile. So what type of joints are these? If we look at a suture joint at the skull, do you think this is not mobile at all, partly mobile, or freely mobile? Well, it's going to be immobile, not mobile at all. So you'd say that what was immobile? That was synarthrotic. So a suture joint is synarthrotic. What about a gomphosis? So the teeth in the jaw. Well, you may think, yeah, I can wiggle it around a bit, but you probably shouldn't be able to wiggle around a bit if you've got adult teeth. They should be quite strongly stuck in there. So this should also be synarthronic. What about syndesmoses? What about the joint that's holding the, tip, uh, the radius and ulna together? Well, you can actually move those around. So I would say that that's partly movable, which is amphiarthrotic. What about a synchondrosis? What about cartilage between the bone, such as that of these epiphyseal plates? Well, that's not moving at all. So that's going to be synarthrotic. And then the last one here, the pubic synthesis. Well, there's a tiny bit of movement that's available there. So you'd say that that is amphiarthrotic. So you may be looking at this saying, well, when do we ever use diarthrotic? Diarthrotic is going to be saved for the synovial joints because synovial joints are all freely movable. It's just how freely movable are they? Sometimes they move in one plane. Sometimes they move in two planes. Sometimes they move in many planes. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.